Hello, it's me, Boscovich. Today, we gonna talk about periodic table. Yo, yo, Nicky. <laughs> Everybody's probably seen the periodic table before, you know, this thing. Today, we're going to go into detail about what is which in this uh, big thing of uh, squadrilaterals. Let's go! First of all, we got periods and groups. Periods are horizontal columns in the periodic table. See, see here. We also have groups. Groups are vertical columns of elements in the periodic table. Um, look like this. Groups are very important to the periodic table because elements in the same groups have similar properties. Although some elements are exceptions though. I'm looking at you, hydrogen and helium. Anyways, groups are very important to defining different types of metals and non-metals in the periodic table. By the way, metals conduct heat and electricity well, while non-metals don't. In the first group are alkali metals. These are very reactive and will probably explode when exposed to air, like this. Beautiful. Now, the second group are alkaline earth metals. Well, it sounds like some neighbor ha has been the copycat thing because uh, the, the, it's ex the exact same name as uh, the first group, but 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 plus the word earth. Outside of having copy name from first group, alkaline earth metals are a bit less reactive than alkaline metals. See, when alkali are like these, alkaline earth are more like these. After that, there's this huge middle section right here, groups 3 through 12, called transition metals. These guys are all not very reactive. But with that not reactiveness, you can do this. is the non-metals. First is halogens. These non-metals are highly reactive, only they don't explode like They're more like Finally, there is noble gases. They're like you expect. Noble. I, I mean, I don't really know what noble means, but I, I mean, like, I, I just know that noble gases are all like so, they're not very reactive is what I'm trying to say. After all that, you might think that is all. Too bad for you, because we are going to have to do some more learning! Yay! Time for our next learning Who, who are you? Shut up, go away, I'm recording! Learning. All elements have tiny sublimatermic practicals called protons, electrons, and the drones. Protons are in the nucleus of an atom and have a positive charge. Neutrons are also in the nucleus of an atom but have a neutral charge. Electrons are flying around outside the nucleus like little hot air balloons but much faster and they have a negative charge. The amount of protons and electrons in an atom defines an element. These numbers on each square represent the number of protons in one of the element's atoms. Now, when you see an element on the periodic table, that is the element in its neutral state. Since protons have a positive charge and electrons have a negative charge, the same amount of each would make the element's charge neutral. So, since the elements need to be neutral, an element's atomic number also represents the number of electrons. So, for lithium, for example, 
it would have three protons and three electrons. You might have thought I forgot about neutrons. I didn't. Neutrons have a neutral charge, remember? Pro Promise me not to go? They are also in the nucleus of an atom. You see this number underneath the symbol for an element? That's the atomic mass. The atomic mass is the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus. That there is how you find out the number of neutrons. You use your arithmetic ability to find out. Protons and neutrons minus protons equals neutrons. Let's try it out. With beryllium, the atomic number is 4 and the atomic mass is 9.0121 something something. Let's just round it to 9. So, 9 minus 4, after all my careful calculations, is 7.1823... Boscovich, what? no, 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 that's the wrong paper. Well, why didn't you tell me this would be wrong paper? After all my careful calculations, 9 minus 4 is 5. Wait. No, 5. Um, so there should be about 5 neutrons in the nucleus of an atom of beryllium. Oh, this little tail sticking up down below. These are elements that would have been put in the periodic table, but they would have ruined the organization pattern of the periodic table. So, that, so scientists just slapped it down here instead. The top row of the tail is lanthanoids. They burn in air, so I guess they would also be like leaf. Then there are the actinoids. They are very radioactive, so they can be put in stuff like bombs to do this. Well, I believe that is all there is to talk about today. Next time, we'll talk about how to organize your many stuffed animals. Bye-bye! Was amazing! Yeah!